Okay, today I'm going to show you a technique that will help you speed up your cycles renders drastically, sometimes 10 times faster, even more. It of course depends on your machine and the scene you're trying to render. Now this is a feature that is coming out in version 2.81 called AI denoising. It uses artificial intelligence to help denoise your image. At the time of this video, 2.81 is not fully released yet. So if you want access to it, you can go to the Blender download page here and we can scroll down and get Blender Experimental, and then you can download the latest version here. Now, I already have a project opened up here to test from my Instagram, and I normally have to render this project at 500 samples. And on my GPU, with my current setup, that takes me about five and a half minutes per frame. You can see up here, it's actually five minutes, 21 seconds. Now we're going to do a pass with the AI denoiser, compare results and compare times. So I'm gonna lower the render samples down to something extremely low, like 10 samples. We know that'll render quickly. Now to make sure that we can use the AI denoiser, we need to go to our context tab here and turn on denoising data because we're gonna need that in the compositor. So now I'm gonna to go to slot two so that we can compare here. And I'm gonna hit render. There we go. So this scene took about 14 seconds, 13.98 seconds to render at 10 samples. And of course it looks awful. And as you know, if you've used Blender's denoiser, which I think is good, but lacking in some areas, but overall it's a pretty great product. It will denoise your images, but it'll oftentimes kind of smooth things out too much. And it can't handle large amount of noises like this. So we're gonna come over to our compositor. I already have a bit of a compositing setup since this is a project I had done previously. But what you need to pay attention to is your render, render layers over here. And of course you can feed that directly over into your composite here if you don't have a full compositing setup like mine. But we're going to add a denoising node by hitting Shift A, searching and looking for denoise. I'm gonna put that right here. And then we need to feed more information into it. So if you look at it now, it kind of looks like what you would expect a traditional denoiser to look like. We can see we've lost a lot of detail on here, running here and in the background, everything just looks a bit soft and kind of smeared. So we have all these new options over here because we turned on that denoising data. And we're going to feed those into here and then it will use its artificial intelligence to kind of read the scene with the data we've gated and do the best denoise that it can. So first we're going to take the denoising albedo and put it here. And you won't see much of a difference with that one, but here's where the magic happens. We'll take the denoising normals and we'll put that there. And boom, you can see that we get a lot of our sharpness back in our scene. And we can see that a lot of that fingerprint texture has come back and that things look good in the background. Now that took us down from five and a half minutes to 14 seconds. So theoretically, I could have rendered this all out on one machine fairly quickly within an hour or so. Of course, there are going to be some limitations and some drawbacks. It doesn't always do the best with straight edges. So if you're doing architectural scenes, it may struggle with that. In animation, because it's analyzing each frame, you sometimes get a lot of kind of bubbling back here. So we can see back here where there's a little bit of kind of uh, distortion from the noise. When that's animated, you'll see it kind of bubbling, which you saw the example in the front where I rendered that entire thing with AI denoiser at 10 samples. So you can see it doesn't look that bad, especially when you're uploading it to the internet with internet compression. But there are still some drawbacks. It may not be the kind of thing you want to work on for client work or if you're doing super high res images that are going to be blown up huge. But if you're doing your personal projects or uploading online, it's great. It can really speed up your renders. And of course, you can always up that sample count to get better results. I'm planning on doing more tutorials, so let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Let me know if you have questions here and I'll do my best to answer when I can. In the future, I will be sharing some project files, I can't share this one because it's working with some paid content and going to be going to a game project that I'm working on with the client. However, please subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the future. Thanks for checking it out and share whatever renders you do below.